Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and if you're noticing an echo, it's because I'm in a very empty garage. So the 2019 Mazda MX-5 Miata RF should be sitting right here, and it's not. And I'm sorry to say, I've sold the Miata. I wanted to let you know that, I wanted to announce that I have sold the car. Uh, I also wanted to go through why, and I'll also go through some of the reasons why I really enjoyed the car. So it wasn't an easy decision. Uh, I've had the car for almost three years and have th I've thoroughly enjoyed it. However, it's not perfect. I know some of you are already probably typing away with the comments. How dare I, how could I make those statements because Miata is always the answer. And for me, unfortunately, I don't think it was. So in today's video, I am gonna go through some reasons why I really like the car. So I don't wanna make it all negative, but I also wanna go through some of the reasons why I ultimately decided to sell the car. If you're an individual who maybe in a way feels like you're different than the rest of the Mazda Miata owners and that you're just not 100% happy with the car, that you find faults, but you're afraid of voicing any of those faults, maybe some of this resonates with you, right? I'm sure I'm not alone. So I'm gonna go through those reasons and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about, we have an empty garage. We need to fill this space. What are we gonna put in this spot to replace the Maz Miata. So let's start off with the positive. Still love how this car looks. It's what drew me initially to the car. I still look back when I, after parking the car, I still receive compliments after three years of people who aren't sure exactly what kind of car it is. Uh, the Miata RF isn't as recognizable as the soft top, and in a way that's a good thing. A lot of people are confused and are excited to ask questions about the car. Love how the car drives from a cornering, from a feel perspective how well the steering, the suspension communicates to the driver, how it gives a sense of speed when you're not necessarily going too fast, which is great. It doesn't get you in trouble. The gas mileage, especially with the price of gas being as expensive as it is, I have been routinely getting high 30s. Great reliability, three years, no problems with the car. Granted, I have not put a lot of miles on the car, but it has been trouble-free for those three years. So what else? The Mazda Miata community. So great group of people, large following, car's been out for a long time. People love their Miatas, stick with their Miatas. I have found that a lot of Miata owners have not just owned one Miata, they've owned multiple Miatas over the years, and they're always very willing um, and excited to help share, to, to help you and to share their experiences about the Miata. Now, why did I sell the car? Okay, so the reasons why I decided to ultimately sell the car. The first is the noise. <laughs> I know, I know, it's a convertible. Yes, it's, it's a little loud. It is deafening at highway speeds. And I've had convertibles. The last one before this was um, a Porsche 718 Boxster, and it's not nearly as loud. And I understand it's a much more expensive car, but the car is also loud in a mechanical sense. So I now have a driveway that has a little bit of an incline, not too much, but whenever I back the car out of the driveway onto the street, I'm always getting these clunking noises. When I'm going over rough patches of road surface, I get these 
the car doesn't seem as well put together. I just don't like it. I wish it was a tighter feeling car. I just don't like the mechanical looseness. It's small. Yes, the smallness adds to some of the fun, but it's so small, it's caught me in a couple situations where other drivers have not noticed me because I'm down low, the car is small, it's hiding behind the car in front. I, I, I feel lucky that I haven't been in an accident, that I've had a couple of close calls. It does make me a little bit nervous. Is a lack of storage space, a lack of cargo volume, of trunk. It is amazing how many times I have planned to go somewhere and take the Miata only to stop and have to take the other car because I have no ability to carry whatever I'm going to get. And it drives me nuts. It is not a car that my wife and I can jump into and go away for overnight or two days and put some you know, bags in the trunk. There's no space in the trunk. And maybe I could put my bag in the trunk, but my wife's bag certainly is not gonna fit in the trunk. So the seats are horrible. The, the lack of lumbar support really affects me on any trips, honestly, longer than 15 or 20 minutes. It's not even just lumbar support. It feels like you sink into an egg. It is almost not even enough back support in the upper back. So the seats, I think I was hoping that I could make it faster by either installing a turbo, a supercharger, whatnot. I get it. It wasn't built to go fast in a straight line. I understand that. Still, I was hoping I could make it a little bit quicker. And over the three years, I have not seen significant gains uh, in progress when it comes to turbo and supercharger options for the Mazda Miata. I need a little bit quicker of a car. I have found through putting together these videos and testing out the exhaust, the mid pipe, the tunes that it is very difficult to add any significant horsepower. Even if a turbocharger or a supercharger kit was readily available and easily tunable for a reasonable price, in the back of my mind, I always have that ND transmission on my mind. So I certainly don't wanna do all that and then have to pay to replace my manual transmission because it failed. So there you go. Those are the reasons why I've been taking a look at other options. I've done a couple of videos. If you haven't taken a look at those videos, I'll leave links in the description below. And having gone through those videos, my conclusion is Toyota Supra. I've always been a big fan of the Toyota Supra ever since the MK3. I had a second cousin that had one. I remember seeing that car and just falling in love with it. Um, when the MK4 came out, probably like everybody else, just loved that car. Came close, came so close to buying one in Baltic blue. But the MK5, when it was originally released, I wasn't so sure about the looks but it's grown on me. The performance has grown on me. The fact that for model year 2023, Toyota is offering a six speed manual transmission, it's very compelling. Second on the list is a BMW M240i. And the only reason why I'm not saying an M2 is I don't think I wanna spend that much. It does offer more performance. It does offer a back seat, which I didn't say that's the reason why I got rid of the car, but it is a plus. The downside is it's not offered a manual transmission. So I have to think, I gotta think about the BMW a little bit more. And then maybe not surprisingly, or maybe surprisingly, is the new uh, Toyota GR Corolla. Honestly, I hate the fact that they've named it a Corolla. I think it, should have came over as Yaris because everybody just thinks of an Econobox, a reliable Econobox, but an Econobox when you say the words Corolla, it's a good price point, or it should be a good price point for the Corolla. 
the all-wheel drive, that could be a lot of fun. Six-speed manual, a turbocharged engine. Um, I like what I think are the possibilities for that car. Especially Before we close, I do want to send out a heartfelt thank you to all of you who have watch the videos, who have subscribed to the videos, who have been there over the three years. I, I'm not ending the series. Remember, we have another car. We have the Honda Accord 2.0 Touring, and we're gonna replace the Miata with something else. But I, did, I do, I really appreciate all the support, and I wanted to thank you for that. I hope you end up staying with the channel. With that said, thank you for joining, and until next time.